And what I found out was that the golden metal shop that I bought this bar from, they knew what this was, they knew it was worth less, but because I was in there asking questions, trying to learn, trying to get educated by people who I thought were experts that were on my side, well, they basically took advantage of me. Hey, welcome back, it's Nolan Mathias, and today I'm going to tell you about the stupidest and probably the coolest investment I ever made. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Okay, so let's get into it. What is the stupidest investment that I've ever made? And quite frankly, also the coolest investment I have ever made. Well, it's this. It's buying physical gold and silver. This is honestly one of the coolest things, being able to sit here and hold, basically in this pile alone, $5,000 worth of silver and having a little bit of gold kicking around as well. Um, this is really cool. And this is an investment that started for me back in 2014 as silver prices were starting to come down, as the fear from the financial crisis was coming out of the market, and as there was starting to become more and more deals on buying physical silver and gold. And this was nothing that I ever expected that I would invest in myself, but it came about as a result of an investment newsletter that I was subscribed to that was all based around value investing. And value investing is the type of investing that Warren Buffett does. So finding companies that are worth a lot, that are undervalued and investing in those. And that investment strategy is where the similarities to Warren Buffett ended because they also got into the piece about having precious metals as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation and also holding it physically rather than in um, certificates or in ETFs so that if anything ever happened in a country that you lived in and you wanted to bug out to a different country, much like the Jewish people had to do in Nazi Germany during the World War II, well, physical gold and silver was the best means of doing that. Now, um, physical gold may have been a good means of being able to transport money over borders, which by the way, I'm not recommending, uh, but physical silver certainly isn't. You know, this is about $5,000 worth of physical silver and it is heavy as hell. I think there's about 160 ounces here, so about 10 pounds. I wouldn't want to be carrying this on an airplane to go to Europe or some other country right now. But it was interesting because that value investing newsletter got me hooked on what's called stacking in the gold and silver world. And stacking is exactly what it sounds like. It's taking physical gold and silver and collecting as much as you can of it, of it over a certain amount of years and basically creating a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation as a result of having physical metal. And this is something that is just absolutely unnecessary as far as I'm concerned. It's something that I did for a while, it was fun, but there are far better ways for me to invest in silver and gold, and that is by using my BMO investor line or my Quest Trade account in order to purchase mining companies, or if I really, really want to, uh, certificates in physical gold and silver. But, you know, it was interesting because this investment was definitely an investment I learned a lot about because one, you learn how the system works. Obviously, people who are buying gold are paying less for it than the people who are selling gold because typically you have to sell dealers and they're obviously getting a better deal from you than you're getting from them. The other thing I realized was that there's a lot to know about buying physical gold and silver, and it's really easy to get screwed. And I'll use this bar as an example, because this is the very first bar of silver that I ever bought. It's a 10 ounce NTR metals bar. I bought it from the exact same company that I bought this bar from, which is a Sunshine 10 ounce silver bar. I paid about $2 difference between this bar and this bar. This one I think I paid about $245 for, and this one about $247 for. And again, bought them from the exact same gold and silver shop, um, and I paid pretty much the same price. Now what was interesting was a few years later, when I went to sell this bar, the NTR bar, back to that same gold and silver shop, they basically told me that it was worth 15% less than this one. So in today's terms, this bar is worth about $330. This one is worth $280. So there's about a 15% or a $50 difference between these two bars, even though they're supposed to be exactly the same thing. And what I found out was that the gold and metal shop that I bought this bar from, they knew what this was, they knew it was worth less, but because I was in there asking questions, trying to learn, trying to get educated by people who I thought were experts that were on my side, well, they basically took advantage of me. 
and they had these two bars sitting beside each other. And instead of picking up this one, they picked up this one, handed it to me and charged me significantly more than what it was worth. And what I realized was that when you're dealing in gold and silver, the margins are so freaking thin that the companies that do business in this, in this realm are basically uh, incentivized to screw you if they can. And I've heard lots of stories now of people buying fake gold and silver, thinking that what they were getting was real and ultimately getting stuff that absolutely was not. So this is definitely a situation where it's buyer beware. Now as an alternative, I could have bought the exact same amount of silver that I own right here. I could have bought it in my BMO investor line account in a certificate, or I could have bought an ETF. And I could have been 100% certain that the silver I was buying was real because an expert on the other side was taking care of making sure that it was real and that I wasn't going to lose 15% of my investment just because I was an idiot. The other thing that I realized about this uh, product was I have to physically store this in a bank safety deposit box or I have to take the risk of storing it at home, having extra insurance and risking having a fire or it getting stolen. And that all sucks. And that all adds to the cost of owning this investment. And at the end of the day, there was a whole bunch of reasons why they suggested physical silver or gold. First was that it was cool. The second was that if you ever needed to leave a country uh, and go to a different country with it, you could basically hide it and smuggle it into another country. Again, don't endorse that, but that was a big reason. And in 2020, that reason is nowhere close to as valid as it was in 2014. Because in today's day and age, if I wanted to go to a different country and take over $10,000 with me, which is the amount that you legally have to declare, uh, by the way, I don't suggest doing that, but let's say it was 1945, Nazi Germany, and I need to get out of the country with a bunch of money. Well, I'm not doing it with a bunch of gold coins anymore. I'm probably taking a USB drive that has Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency on it. So, you know, all the reasons for holding this stuff um, basically don't make any sense. And the only reason that somebody really becomes a stacker in today's day and age, in my opinion, is if they're a conspiracy theorist. If they think that this is better than cash or better than holding an investment in a online investment uh, portfolio, and therefore, you know, they think that the world one day will come to an end and this is what's going to be able to save them. And you know what? I don't think that this is what's going to save somebody from basically not having any money, any money or having any sort of um, ability to buy things if the economy goes to, uh, you know, hell in a handbasket. So, you know, this was a fun investment for basically seven years. It was an interesting investment for seven years. It's one that I definitely wouldn't make again. Um, all of this stuff, all this gold and silver is going to be gone by the time that you watch this video, uh, except for this bar, this NTR bar. I might keep this just as a reminder myself of why you should invest in things that you don't understand. And, um, and you know, for the most part, my time with this was nice. It's cool. It's nice to show th to people. It was nice to cut out so single bars and give them to uh, families when when they had their first uh, child and just say, hey, here you go, this is a little present from me. But this stuff, it's all gotta go. Now, in comparison to this, you'll also see that there's another pile of stuff over here. This is all things that my grandparents and my parents collected. This all has sentimental value. This isn't going anywhere. It's going straight back in the safety deposit box because this sort of thing is really cool. And where I would spend a little bit of money going forward in coins and, precious metals is in things that got discontinued. So things like old Canadian money, $20 bills, $10 bills, um, things like pennies, things like nickels when they eventually stop making those. I think they're all cool investments and, and it's cool to have things that have sentimental value. Things like this. This uh, is four three pence coins from that were given to my mom when, no, sorry, they were given to my grandmother when my mom was born. One of these goes back to 1916. Uh, there's a whole bunch of silver dollars that my grandfather collected. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Montreal silver coins, you know, real nickel nickels and series of coins. Like these are all wrapped up. I've never opened them. I don't even know what they are, but they appear to be some sort of a Canadian co series of coins like penny, nickel, um, quarter, all that stuff. So um, things like this that have sentimental value, coins, stuff like that. I don't think anything like this should ever be sold. There's probably just as much value, if not more value here as there is in this pile. But this sort of thing, gold bars, silver, silver bars, this is an unnecessary investment. It's 
like I said, one of the stupidest investments I've ever made and one that I am glad to be divesting myself of and ultimately I get a little bit of return from. So if you found this video interesting, if you found my story about my stupidest investment I ever made interesting, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video and we'll see you on the very next one. Cheers.